Hello. Hi. I'm very warm. Um, that's not what this video is about. Last time you saw me, I was packing for this trip to Surya in Spain. The trip has happened. It's a month later. I am now packing. Here is my suitcase. I am now packing to go back to London. I had big, big plans, big plans to make a video while I was here. Sort of like time of the month-esque with little montages and lots of bits and bobs. Didn't really do that, I think. Unless when I look through the footage, I realise I did, in which case, here you go. <laughs> Taking a picture, I'm I'm filming. idea what just happened. I hope it was lovely. Um, so yeah, big, big plans. And then the month just sort of happened and I've been very busy doing things and I've decided instead to do what I did on the way out, which is just chat and pack. The old chat and pack, that old chestnut. All I will say for now is um, I'm writing another book. Yeah, I feel like I should, I feel like I should be over there. Hold on. <sighs> very sweaty, just very sweaty. These are the conditions under which I guess you'd want to announce that you're writing another book, just dripping in sweat. But yeah, I'm, I'm writing another book. I've been saying for some time now that I, I, I wanted to, and I was writing something or something was brewing and I, I didn't, I didn't quite know what it was. And I took myself off away to Spain to this retreat uh, for a month and what I needed to happen, happened. And I felt very um, detached in a good way. There's the horses going by. As you do, the evening horses. I mean, that's kind of just exactly what I'm trying to say to you is this is the kind of place where every morning and evening the horses go by. Um, and exactly the kind of place I needed to come to to detach from London from life, from everything, um, everything that was distracting me from um, just focusing and being creative. And I did that and some magic happened and it's been really lovely and really productive. And I wanna tell you all about it. However, as we've established, I cannot pack and talk at the same time. And I really need to pack quite quickly because I'm going to an airport soon. So um, I'll catch you back in London and I'll fill you in on everything there and hopefully I will be much calmer. Hello, hi, welcome back to London. Um, I've actually been back in London about a month now. Um, I've just been, I've been so busy. I haven't had time to like sit down and watch that footage and have a chat with you. This is the first chance I'm getting. Um, Cause as soon as I got back, I was, I was straight into the studio to record my audiobook, which is just a fun sentence to say always. Um, so I was recording the audiobook. That was, that was so much fun. That was incredible. It was also difficult. Um, I might even make a whole separate video about it, to be honest, it was such an experience. Um, so I was doing that and then also just getting ready for the big US launch. So Out of Love is out um, Tuesday 28th of September in the US. It's kind of bittersweet for me. Um, I think I've said this before, but it's, um, oh, it's a bit disappointing to be honest. Um, you know, like I launched it the first time around in the UK, didn't get to actually do a launch. I was sort of, you know, in my apartment for it. And this time around I 
was so so hoping I would get to go to the States and be there for the launch and obviously I am not and obviously that is understandable and totally makes sense and it just wouldn't be safe to travel right now um, to New York but yeah I'm, I'm pretty disappointed and trying very hard to just be very grateful for everything I do have I mean I'm so so grateful which is why it's bittersweet because it's a wonderful thing that's happening I'm just sad that I'm not you know going to be there physically to see it it's like baby's first day of school you know and I'm not there to see her off and um, be there for that moment because it's never going to be my first book again and this book has been obviously you know like so important to me and I spent so many years on it and it's so close to my heart and yeah so it would have been nice alas I am not there and for that reason I'm gonna ask you please <laughs> to be there for me. If you're anywhere in the States and you see out of love there, please, 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 I would love so much if you could just send me a quick picture, just take a quick picture, like tweet it to me or post it on Instagram or or whatever and just tag me so that, so that I can see her out in the world <laughs> flourishing. I'm told there's also gonna be, it's gonna be in airports, I think, some airports. So if you see it in an airport, please let me know. That would be so exciting. Um, yeah. Thank you in advance for that. I know, I know you'll do me proud. I am now sort of stopping, as I said, and, and reflecting on that footage I just showed you. And so here's the thing. <laughs> From a storytelling perspective, I could have just cut all that. Like it doesn't really serve any purpose. <laughs> I watch it back and I'm like, Hazel, you're not saying anything. You, you just, which is, I mean, what I'm doing half the time, but I very easily could have just started here, told you I'm writing a new book and just, just taken it from there. And we wouldn't really have lost anything story-wise, but I decided to keep it in. I wanted to keep it in um, for me, honestly, um, so that when I look back on it, I don't know, I just felt like it should be her who delivered that news. You know, it should be that version of me who had just had this incredible experience, this incredible month, um, who had just, just finished the first draft of the first chapter. And in that moment, I was just so excited. Like you can see it. I was watching it back like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I was just so into it that I wanted it to be her who said, I'm writing another book um, instead of me, but I'm saying it to you again, I am. And um, it feels right. It, it feels like I'm doing it for all the right reasons. It feels like I'm ready to. I feel like there's there's a story I want to tell. There are themes I want to explore. I'm back to that place where it's sort of keeping me up at night. You know, it's, it's the story is with me when I'm in the shower, when I'm on the tube, when I'm out with friends, you know, it's, it's, it's just sort of in there. I'm not sure how much to say at this point. I mean, you know how this goes. I think my favorite part of like announcing this recently was I said on Instagram that I thought I was writing something like I was like I'm writing something I don't know if it's a book I think it is you know watch this space and someone just replied cool see you in three years <laughs> it's like perfect like yep that is about as long as it takes to to do this and that's another big thing I'm sort of coming to terms with I think when I had writer's block for a lot of this year instead of sort of doing nothing I decided to consume as much as I could N not food <laughs> I mean I did that as well I figured if nothing was coming out I may as well be putting good stuff in like really nourishing myself so I started you know being very mindful about like what I was watching the the, the tv series the films the documentaries like anything I could kind of watch in or around the themes that that I wanted to write about and I was I was reading a lot I was reading a lot about writing and one of the books that that just really spurred me on and changed a lot for me is Annie Dillard The Writing Life if you read it you know if you haven't oh my god get it it applies I, I think it applies to every kind of creativity and really helps kind of look look at what creativity is and what it means to you and why we do it and how we do it and one of the first things it said like within the first couple pages was it takes a long time to write a book like it could take up to 10 years or more to write a book you know if if you're doing it right 
and pressuring yourself and trying to do it in a hurry is just not you know that's not conducive to good writing what am i announcing i'm announcing that i'm i'm writing a new book it's definitely happened it i you know all things going to plan it will come out at some point but it's not like it's going to be out next year i would love it to be a 2023 release i'm going to aim for that and um please don't hold me to that <laughs> someone probably should hold me to that so that i get it done i'm noticing there's definitely a pattern in the themes I find myself exploring the themes I find myself wanting to explore and I think at first that was putting me off once again I, I'm looking at love and grief and loss I'm looking at a, a couple you know of, of a certain age who are going through a breakup and what that does to them and I was I was put off a little bit writing this new one because it was sort of similar in some ways I was scared I guess it's second album syndrome it's like well people like the first one better not fuck this one up you know and it's 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 scary the first time around no one was expecting anything and now I feel it's kind of an expectation and I was very scared to to sort of tread similar ground but then I'm like Sally Rooney's books are all the same and I mean that with love. I fucking love Sally Rooney's books. I'm nearly at the end of the new one, Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I, I love it. And it's dealing with similar themes in a similar way, with similar characters, but it's also not. It's very different and it's very fresh. And, you know, I, I look at things like, like Chris Nolan has made 22 films about time now. No one's stopping him. Yeah, I feel comfortable saying this book deals with a breakup again, but instead of moving backwards, it moves forwards, uh, sort of through the aftermath of it. It sort of sifts through the debris a little bit. Um, last time when I wrote Muscle Memory, when I wrote the first chapter where they break up, I just, I had no interest in taking the story forward. That just at the time that wasn't interesting to me. I wanted to go backwards and dissect that relationship. This time I am interested in moving forward with, with this particular couple. And I'm interested in looking at a specific period of time following the loss and what happens in that time. Um, I guess one of the big themes of the book, and laugh at me if you want, one of the big themes of the book is liminality. I also had to look it up, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I was like, what is this thing I'm interested in? I kept, I kept finding myself coming back to a similar theme and then I could put a word to it. And the word is liminality or liminal spaces, which are spaces in which um, they're, they're sort of like thresholds or, or limbo spaces in between two other things. Um, so, you know, adolescence, puberty is a sort of a liminal space. You're not a child anymore. You're not an adult yet. You're in this sort of weird middle ground where you've yet to become the thing you know you're going to become, but you can't go back to being the thing you were. Um, pregnancy, engagement, you know, th these sort of <sighs> waiting rooms, I guess, um, in life where you're waiting for the next thing. And I think that healing, that, that period of healing after a loss can be a really interesting liminal space that we find ourselves in. And I think it also um, mirrors how I feel about um, creativity and I guess it's kind of meta as well, because even in, in, in writing this book for so much of this year, I wasn't quite ready to write it yet. Um, but, you know, I couldn't go back to not thinking about it. And it's, it's that sort of question of like, well, when does it become a book? When does it become a story? You know, is it when I put pen to paper? Is it when I finish it? Is it when it's, it's printed and bound and it's a physical book? You know, at what point is it a book? Um, which is a similar kind of question you can apply to life. You know, we, we talk about it all the time about, you know, at what point does a group of cells become an embryo, become a blastocyst, become a fetus, become a child, become life? You know, it's, it's at what point is, is a soul breathed into something? And I, f I feel the same about um, the creation of, of art. Like, at what point does it become the thing. So these are all things I want to explore, I guess, once again, against the backdrop of, of a breakup, of a relationship. Um, 
but there's sort of you know more going on than just the breakup itself and there's also just sort of other things I want to explore about losing someone when you're quite young and that sort of grief and and the sort of space that that puts you in and, and whether it keeps you uh in this sort of middle ground space whether you ever fully move on from it um yeah I feel like I'm just saying a lot of things <laughs> it's maybe really fucking confusing or I sound a bit mad honestly um usually when someone says what's the book about you give them a plot, you know? You're like, well, this woman gets lost in the woods and then she meets a fairy and then the fairy turns out to be evil. And it's like, that that's a plot, that's a storyline. I can't give you the plot yet. I, I don't actually know the plot yet. And that's not really how I operate. I, I write to explore something that's niggling at me. You know, I, I, I take an experience that I've had that maybe I don't quite understand or maybe that I've found a new understanding of and I want to explore that on the page um, or through different characters. I, I write to, to open up and unlock stuff that interests me. You know, I take a theme that I find interesting and then I, I sort of run with it and I use the characters and the plot and the story as a way of answering questions answering my own questions and and therapizing myself and figuring shit out and like the byproduct of that is you get a book <laughs> that's not but I don't write to make a book I don't write to have a book you know that's not that's not the sole reason that's not even the main reason I, I write for all those other reasons and then it becomes a book which is great because books you know make me money and pay the bills I hope that made some sense to somebody and if it didn't you know maybe maybe I just kept you company for a while while you wash the dishes as per usual I actually really really wanted to talk to you about my experience in Spain and, and how it helped with my creativity it was a very beautiful um calming spiritual and and enlightening experience for me i met some wonderful people i more than anything learned that i can be away from home for a month um i was very anxious about doing it and i was absolutely fine it's made me want to travel more it's made me want to be part of a community more and um i've made some wonderful friends who i've already met up with since i got back and, and i'm so glad to have met them i would fully recommend just changing it up, changing scenery, being in nature. Oh my God, the difference it makes to step out of your door every day and just see mountains, like crazy to walk outside and see the sunrise over a, over a mountain top and watch the sunset every night. And to just be in that kind of environment, it, it does change you. It absolutely does change you, I think, on like a physiological level. It certainly changed me. It was incredible. I will link to uh, Surya Lila, which is the name of the retreat in the description. If you feel like checking them out or maybe booking some time away, I, I just couldn't recommend it more. <sighs> Breathe. This is what happens. I start camp and I get to here. Um, so yeah, month away was amazing. Would recommend. Uh, writing a new book feels fucking amazing. One day that will be a thing. And in the meantime, Out of Love is out in the States on Tuesday the 28th of September. It's available in paperback, available to buy now. I will link to it in the description. There is also an audiobook read by me, as I said, which is, I mean, that's a whole other story, but just one of the most vulnerable, exposing things I have ever done, honestly. To, to read that story in my voice and to know that, you know, people will be like lying in bed alone with my voice in their ears, listening to, to such personal feelings, you know, being conveyed. Um, is a bit terrifying and I just I, I just have to trust that you will um, treat it with as much um, respect and love and care as you have done the book itself which I'm sure you will. I really hope that you enjoy the audiobook. So much love went into it. So much love went into it. Um, yeah that's all available. Links to everything in the description. You're fucking wonderful. I'm fucking wonderful. Let's be honest we're all fucking wonderful and I hope you're having a fucking wonderful day wherever you are. <laughs> This is how we're signing off, apparently. I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching.